I'm Michael Battelle, president and founder of the Fatty Liver Alliance. We raise awareness about the risk causes and complications of fatty liver disease and help those already diagnosed with muscle mass by advocating for access to approved treatments and care. Today, as part of our patient-focused series, Liver Insights, Illuminating the Path Through Mastled and Mash, I'm excited to introduce Dr. Sonal Kumar. Dr. Kumar is a hepatologist and an assistant professor of medicine and currently is the director of clinical hepatology at Weill Cornell Medical College. Her clinical interests include steatotic liver disease, viral hepatitis, genetic and autoimmune liver disease, and alcoholic liver disease. She has had a personal re and research interest in metabolic health, specifically with regards to fatty liver and obesity. For patients who have just learned that they have what most people call still fatty liver disease, it can be super scary. Could you please help patients and their families understand the journey ahead and introduce them to the terms and meanings of Mastled and Mash, the stages of disease that they might experience in the future and the potential progression to cirrhosis. Like no pressure here, but you're, you, what you're gonna share today is is really gonna help illuminate that path for a lot of people. So, so take it away. Yeah. <laughs> Thank now, you. Um... Thank you, Mike, so much for having me here today. I'm so excited to be kicking off uh, this series with you. As you know, fatty liver or muscle or whatever you want to call it is very near and dear to my heart. And it is such an important topic. Um, you know, it's so common in our population and there's so much change in the field, whether it be the terminology or new medications that may be coming out. And there's also an increase in awareness. And, you know, the problem or not problem, the thing with mass old or fatty liver is that not all fatty liver is the same. Um, and I think whether you yourself have just been diagnosed with fatty liver or mass old, or you have a family member who's been diagnosed with the disease, or you're just learning about it yourself. Um, I think it's really important that you understand the terminology, you really understand the disease spectrum, the disease progression, what the what the risks are, what the risk factors are, that everyone sort of starts off that on that even foundation. Um, so I'm really happy, excited to be talking about that here That's today. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. <laughs> and, and I asked you to do some visuals too, to help explain it a little bit, you know, yeah. and I also can imagine that because it's a silent disease, really, that, that for a lot of people, it came out of the blue and they probably had no idea that they had this. So what you're going to share is so, so important. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the good and bad of the liver is that, um, you know, it, it doesn't really have any nerves that cause symptoms. So you can live your life normally well, with liver disease, but the bad side of that is that you could have a liver disease and it can go undiagnosed for years. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So let me, I have some slides, so I'm going to share them right here. Uh, this will work. All right. Good. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so I think, you know, what I wanted to do was sort of just start out with just basic terminology. What exactly is muscled? A lot of people actually haven't heard the term muscled before. Um, they've heard naffled or fatty liver or non-alcoholic fatty liver, but muscled is somewhat of a newer term. Um, it was formerly known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but now muscled um, is the, the working terminology that we use. And that stands for metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. And that name change was really driven um, by an effort to more accurately depict exactly what the disease is. And what it is, is the deposits of fat or steatosis in the liver of a person with at least one other metabolic condition. Um, and when, when I think about other metabolic conditions, things like increased BMI, it can be diabetes, prediabetes, or any form of insulin resistance, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. But really, we should start thinking about muscled, fatty liver, NAFLD, um as a metabolic condition. Because if you you know, dig deep into the pathophysiology, the the causes, what is actually going down, going on in the cells of the liver. It's really a metabolic condition that's closely tied to the um, other processes. 
So who was at risk for Masseld? Why did you or your family member get Masseld? Um, you know, like I said, it's a metabolic process that's very closely tied to other metabolic diseases as well. And so the big three that we think of are high cholesterol, diabetes, and obesity. Um, and so if you have one or more of those, um, and the more that you have, the higher you are at risk for developing Masseld or fatty liver. But there's some other things to also sort of keep in the back of your mind. Um, number one is family history and genetics. Um, so if you have um, a family member, a first degree relative who has Masseld, um, and in particular cirrhosis from Masseld, you, are, you yourself are high, at higher risk for developing it yourself. Um, and then there's some genes that are associated with Masseld as well. So there are certain things that give you a genetic predisposition. We don't typically test for those commercially, but um, just important to know that there, there is a genetic component to this as well. Um, and then I always, I think it's really important to also mention medications. Um, so there are two ways that you can think of uh, medications contributing to fatty liver. And number one, there's some medications that have the side effect of gain of weight gain. Um, and so if you're on, you know, steroids, for example, or, you know, some antidepressants will have will result in in weight gain, then you're going to be at higher risk for developing weight or fat also in the liver. Um, and then you know, then there are also medications that specifically can deposit fat in the liver as well. And I think it's really important that a patient talks to their doctor about whether some medications may actually be contributing to this um, and if those potentially can be changed. But like I mentioned in the beginning, masseled, not all masseled, not all fatty liver is the same. It really is a disease spectrum. So here you can see on the all the way on the left, this is a normal liver, no fat in the liver, um, or very little fat in the liver. About 25 to 30% of the population will develop steatosis in the liver. Um, and when you're sort of in the steatosis stage, um, that just means you have increased fat deposits in the liver cells. And we'll go into a little bit more detail in a second. Um, from steatosis, about a quarter can develop um, what's called steatohepatitis or actual inflammation of the liver, liver cells. And then from there, that chronic inflammation, that chronic damage to the liver cells can cause the development of fibrosis or scar tissue in the liver. Um, fibrosis is staged from zero to four. And once you get to stage four fibrosis, it's considered cirrhosis. And about 20 to 25% of people with steatohepatitis who, you know, which is considered the, the progressive form of the disease will progress on to developing cirrhosis. So I wanted to break that down a little bit, you know, go over the stages in a little bit more detail. So you, you know, you can really understand what the differences are and what are the, what are the implications. So for steatosis, um, like I said, that's just a little bit increased fat deposition in the liver cells. So normal fat in the cell, uh, liver cells, about five to seven, five to ten percent is considered normal. So anything beyond that um, is considered having steatosis. Um, this is sort of the earliest part of the disease spectrum. It's the earliest stage. You're considered the lowest risk for liver-related uh, liver related events. If we did a liver biopsy, there would be no inflammation or damage to the liver cells, but you would just see just fat in the liver cells. However, like I said, this is a metabolic process. So it is considered a me metabolic risk factor and does increase the risk of cardiovascular events. So heart attack, stroke, things like that. Um, just the presence of fat in the liver, just like you would have diabetes or you would have high cholesterol, those are considered, it, uh, steatosis is also considered a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. It's 100% reversible at this point. So um, the focus is really on trying to get uh, to lose weight um, and manage other your other metabolic conditions. And so just like you lose fat anywhere else in the body, you can lose fat in the liver, you can reverse that steatosis. But then if you don't reverse and the disease progresses, you can get metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis or MASH for, for short. And that's really considered the progressive form of the disease. Um, if we did a liver biopsy, we would see inflammation in the liver cells. We would see damage to the liver cells. Um, and because this is considered the progressive form, that's where you can over time develop fibrosis or that scar tissue um, in the liver. 
we think it takes a long time to go through all the different stages from steatosis to MASH to MASH with fibrosis, um, thinking that fibrosis progresses one stage about every seven years through those different zero to four stages. But there are some people who will progress faster. And sometimes at young ages, they will they'll present to clinic with um, more advanced liver disease um, than you would think um, by going by that one stage every se uh, seven years. At around stage two fibrosis, so kind of right smack in the middle, that's where we start to worry about increased risk of liver-related outcomes. And you may hear the terminology at-risk MASH. Um, that's where you kind of, we see the sort of the transition point from worrying about more cardiovascular disease to not only cardiovascular disease, we still worry about the cardiovascular disease, but also more liver related events. So risk of your developing cirrhosis, risk of the, uh, you know, liver dysfunction, things like that, risk of progression. Um, and it's around stage two that we, we start to think about that. Again, still at risk for cardiovascular disease. We still focus on weight loss and managing other metabolic conditions when, when you have MASH and MASH with fibrosis. But that's when we'll start thinking about medications that may have some benefit um, in the liver and we'll probably be monitoring your liver a little bit more closely. Again, this is still reversible. So really until you get to cirrhosis, um, the disease is is reversible. So even if you have some fibrosis or some scar tissue in the liver, um, if you treat it, if you work on weight loss, if you manage your metabolic conditions, maybe um, have, you know, when medications are approved specifically for treating fatty liver, you use those medications, you can reverse this, um, all the damage that's been done. That's not true once you get to cirrhosis. Um, so cirrhosis equals stage four fibrosis. So remember, Stages of fibrosis, zero to four. Stage four is cirrhosis. Once you get to cirrhosis, it's really considered irreversible. Again, it, it takes. we think it takes a long time to get to the cirrhosis standpoint, but some people are considered fast progressors and can develop cirrhosis in as quickly as 10 to 20 years, uh, 10 to 15 years, sorry. Um, once you get to cirrhosis, again, that's when we worry about liver dysfunction. We worry about the risk of liver cancer. It increases your uh, knee, uh, risk for needing a liver transplant. Still at higher risk for cardiovascular disease, but once you get to cirrhosis, that's where we really worry about liver-related outcomes and increased mortality, increased risk of death from liver-related complications. And really the management is focused mainly on trying to preserve the liver function and monitoring for liver outcomes. So that's really what I have to sort of go through everything. And I think the key points to remember is that not all fatty liver, not all muscle is the same. Um, it is a very big spectrum, um, but it's really important to know where you fall because um, it really affects your risk, um, whether it be uh, focused on more cardiovascular risk or if it's focused more on liver-related risk. And that affects your management. Um, and I think the important thing to remember is that all of this is reversible until cirrhosis. So um, if you've been diagnosed with muscle um, with no fibrosis or have a little bit of scarring in the liver, um, it's really important that um, you try to be aggr as aggressive as possible and try to reverse whatever damage may be done. And that's all I have. That was fantastic. And thank you so much. That was so, so clear. Uh, people will really understand it and it would help to have the visuals, I think, too. So you mentioned the metabolic involvement. If patients know that they have uh, these, um, these other metabolic issues and for some reason their doctor has not brought it up before, they should talk about it, I guess, right? Just to- Absolutely. To Absolutely. I think people with, you know- um with other metabolic conditions, because the more metabolic conditions you have, the higher you are at risk for having fatty liver. I think it's important to get screened um, for that. In fact, people with, you know, the endocrinology guidelines actually say that if you have diabetes, you should be screened for fatty liver as well because of that close relationship between diabetes and, and muscles. Okay. I was wondering too, when you've um, spoken with some patients that just found out and maybe they were speaking with you, uh, maybe their primary care physician um, found out through, you know, incidental blood test they had or an ultrasound or something like that. What's the reaction that you're getting 
from patients? Are they are they open to learning? You know, should people be afraid to talk to their specialist when they get referred if that happens? Or what's your what's your thoughts? You're you're the expert. <laughs> I mean, no one should be afraid to talk to their yeah. you know their provider about but this. But it's I new, think. right? And it, it is and it's, new. And it's, I mean, yeah. I think it is a very you know, there's a lot of there's a push to increase awareness both to providers and to patients about muscle because it's such a common condition, and hopefully soon we'll have medications to help treat um, muscle directly. Um, but, you know, I think the reaction is about 50-50. Some people are just surprised by it. Um, and, um, you know, no one's ever told them anything. This is a new, all, all new news to them. Um, but then others, I feel like, have just, you know, been told their entire lives, oh, yes, I've been told I was overweight and that's why I have fat in the liver. Um, and not really considered it its own condition. They just thought it was because of their weight, you know, um, but not an, a separate disease entity like we think of other metabolic conditions. No, that's great. And I think one of my key takeaways too is that you said up to the point that you have cirrhosis, that it's reversible and probably preventable for people who haven't progressed. And that is really important. And I thank you for, you know, for sharing that message of hope for patients. And thank you for taking the time today to, to share such important information. I know a lot of people really appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much for yeah. having me. This is great. Thanks.